So when you start to concentrate these plants, fruits or vegetables, I don't care if they're organic because the rainwater has the glyphosate in it. You're getting glyphosate. I have tested glyphosate in many a patient and stunned to still see super high levels in people who I know are super strict keto or carnivore and organic. You know, we've done tons of detoxification. And I'm like, that glyphosate, they don't drink any alcohol. They don't take any drugs and young, 25 or whatever. Glyphosate is tough. It's everywhere, uh, even when you think it's not. So that's my biggest problem. And glyphosate's entire purpose, it's a pesticide. The whole point is to kill life in the soil so we can grow crops where we shouldn't be and the kinds that we shouldn't be. So then they have to add more things to try and help it grow because now you've killed all the life in the soil. And that comes into our system and it kills the life in our guts. Oh, am I here? Okay, hi guys. Um, let me know if you can hear me with this. I'm, I'm outside because I like to be outside because of the light. And the birds are very loud, so sometimes um, <clears throat> it's hard to hear. So let me know if you can hear me okay with these. I had a weird uh, Instagram live yesterday where my our sound was going in and out. Cool. Thanks, Al. Um, so oftentimes people will ask me a question like in the DMs and sometimes there's like, it's a perfect video response. And I, somebody messaged me the other day, you know, the celery juice never dies, you guys. And it was, hey, you know, Dr. Remka, I really appreciate your opinion. I value blah, 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 being very nice. I appreciate it. And uh, can you tell me why it is you don't like celery juice? So they must have heard me say once or twice or saw a comment that I said, um, right? <laughs> so if you don't know what I'm talking about, you've been living under a rock, which is awesome because being under a rock and away from popular culture right now is probably in your very best interest. But um, <clears throat> I did the celery juice thing a few years ago because a doctor, um, uh, sweeter deets, please. I don't know what that, or sweater. Oh, <laughs> You know, I probably picked it up at Target or something or some some <laughs> random place. Um, I hate shopping, ladies. I need help. I need to date somebody who will shop for me. That's really... People who can shop for me and fix my house, I'm in forever. Okay? Anyway, all right, back to celery juice. So this is the medical medium guy, Anthony something. And <clears throat> I read his book. I went to a um, functional neurologist a few years ago when I was uh, dealing like post mold and the mold at that point had been deteriorating my discs and attacking my nerves and I was dealing with um, a lot of paresthesia and some paralysis that was reminiscent of when I broke my back and herniated my discs and I was getting <clears throat> um, prolozone injection, adjustments, traction. I was doing all the same things I had done before in rehab and it wasn't working. And I'm like, why can't I still not feel my feet and things? Like th this is not going well. And I'll publicly say it, I think for the first time, that's when the first time MS was thrown out to me as a diagnosis. And I was like, what? Uh, I said, no, I'm not, I'm not having the MS. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. So we can come up with a different, a, a different story. Okay. And she's like, yeah, I think the mold is now just ripping through all of your nerves. Like your, all your myelin, everything's going away. And you, it's like, it's MS. You should go get an MRI and so look for lesions in the brain. I was like, I'm a pass on that. I'm a pass. Cause called up all my MS friends and was like, so what would you do? And they're like, why would you do it? Because you wouldn't ever do the drugs anyway. So just, you need to fix it. I said, that's true. I'm just going to fix it. So <clears throat> I had to start rebuilding. Well, believe it or not, her suggestion was telling me like that my keto animal ways were not good. And I was very ketogenic then, um, which was saving me and helping me kill the mold and the parasites and all the stuff I was dealing with. And she was like the medical medium. She's like this, believe it or not, this is amazing. And I'm getting all these amazing results with my patients. I was like, really? And she's really smart and all the things. And I was like, okay. 
So I bought a juicer and I started the celery juice and got the blueberries and was doing all the things, okay? And things were not going well, actually. <laughs> and they're just getting worser and worser. So I was like, let me look into this a little bit more. Not, you know, like, let me not just, I'm trying to be a good patient. I'm like, I'm paying the money and like, I'm not the doctor. I'm not the doctor now. I'm letting you help me. And I want to be like how I want my people to be. Do what I tell you. Okay. And then I was like, mm, we need to have some more conversations about this because I'm, I'm not understanding. Now, I didn't know what an oxalate was then. I didn't know. Okay. I, I didn't, I hadn't been down that rabbit hole. I didn't know who Sally K. Norton was. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. But I read the book and I didn't like the guy. Anthony, medical medium. I was like, ooh, I don't like him. He's beyond arrogant. He's full of shit. There's a lot of hubris in here. He's a narcissist. That's clear. But it doesn't mean he doesn't like hear things and know things. So I'm going to be open to there's some truth in here. And then I would look at stuff and I'm like, well, he's clearly stealing this from this guy. He stole this from this. This is not his original idea. Like this is, I've already, I already know this, this, and this. So some of what he says is true and he's just stealing it from other people. Like not, it's not special information or anything in, in my world, in the holistic world. But a lot of what he's saying is completely stupid. I'm like, oh man, that doesn't make any sense. And he's very disconnected from nature. Like, for a person that's pushing a lot of plant-based vegan stuff, I'm like, again, you're the most disconnected from the natural order and light and light cycles and cold and heat cycles and, and seasons and seasonality and where things grow. And it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. He doesn't understand the physics of it all. But anyway, I went through that. So there's my disclosure. Now, somebody asked my thing about, asked the question. I'm trying not to give you guys a major crotch shot. Um, about celery juice. And I was like are we still talking about this? God bless Gwyneth Paltrow. I, she's a nut job too. I mean, anybody who's selling their vagina scent in a candle is mental. I mean, something's wrong. I mean, we all know this. Okay. So whatever though. Okay. So yeah, it's like a cult, the celery thing in him. I still don't get it. He's got some type of deep charisma apparently I don't get it I don't look at him and think charisma I don't read him and think charisma I see narcissistic charlatan it's very obvious to me doesn't mean he doesn't say things that are right sometimes I mean but a broken clock is right twice a day as well y'all right I mean this I mean you're gonna be right sometimes right so let's talk about celery juice though and why I'm going to go with the, with the pro, with the positive as to why I think some people get some initial results. A couple things. One, they're cutting out shit. They, they're, they're like, okay, let me stop having ho-hos and Twinkies for breakfast and I'll have a juice instead. Well, I would say that's an upgrade. Even if the juice is full of poison, I would say it's probably better then the Twinkies and the Ho-Hos and the Captain Crunch cereal or whatever nonsense people are passing off as breakfast today. Okay. So there's that elimination of other stuff is helping them. All right. I don't care if you switch to something like the blood type diet. It's usually an upgrade from your junk diet. That's why people get results. Two, uh, it, there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of minerals you get, they're getting salts, right? And people are dehydrated and the salts are going to hydrate. Three, there's a lot of water, but there is a special water. That ju celery juice, that's water that's coming out is a live, like structured water. I think the main benefit people are getting is from the structured water. And that's a bigger conversation to get into what is structured water and water and, and dead water and what we may in mitochondrial water. But I do think that's a small pro to it. Now, the cons go on and on. Um, one, I will say one of the biggest cons is the pesticide poisoning, uh, primarily glyphosate. So when you start to concentrate these plants 
fruits or vegetables, I don't care if they're organic because the rainwater has the glyphosate in it. You're getting glyphosate. I, I have tested glyphosate pa uh, on many a patient and stunned to still see super high levels in people who I know are super strict keto or carnivore and organic. And, you know, we've done tons of detoxification. I'm like, that glyphosate, they don't drink any alcohol. They don't take any drugs. And young, 25 or whatever. Glyphosate is tough. It's everywhere, uh, even where you think it's not, okay? So that's my biggest problem. And glyphosate's entire purpose, if you guys know that's a pesticide, I don't know if it's, a, you know, it, it, its whole point is to kill life in the soil. If it, and it's killing life in the soil so we can grow crops where we shouldn't be and the kinds that we shouldn't be, so nothing will that. So then they have to add more things to try and help it grow because now you've killed all the life in the soil. And that comes in our system and it kills the life in our guts, okay? And it also has a bigger problem. Glyphosate seems to be substituting itself for glycine, which is an amino acid in the matrix of connective tissue. And I'm wondering if a lot of these connective tissue collagen disorders are coming from the glyphosate, like the rise in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. It's EDS Awareness Month for those who don't know that. I'm, I'm wondering if glyphosate poisoning is really what's happening. And it's just we're passing it on in utero to our kids. You know, I, it just is what it is, right? Anyway, so there's that. So the glyphosate point, that's a real big one with celery juice. Now there's more poisons and we're gonna talk about it, but here's some things about celery juice, why I don't like it. You're just gonna bang through a few. Um, it's actually a really common allergen, so if you're allergic to um, birch pollen or mugwort, you can have anaphylactic shock to it. And let's say you don't have that high of a reaction, you can be having um, histamine allergic reactions to celery juice and celery seeds that you would not really understand, and you might be like, oh, what's happening? And people say, oh, it's detox. No, pumpkin, you got all those rashes because of you could be having an allergic reaction that is histamine and or it's oxalates, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, it also contains a bunch of compounds. Um, I'm gonna mess up the, I, I, I'm not good with these. You know, Thomas DeLauer pronounces everything well. Furanocumins, furanocumarins or something like that. Like coumarin, the drug, furano, furano. But anyway, it makes you sensitive to the light, to sunlight. It makes you burn, uh-huh. So if you're drinking a lot of shit ton of celery juice like all these people are doing in his cult, I like the word, the cult, uh, they're burning. So people, everybody talks about um, seed oils, omega-6 sunflower, soybean, safflower, peanut, um, canola, I'm sure this other one's grape seed, I don't know, whatever those oils are, I don't eat them. They make you burn as well. And the biggest one would be the lack of infrared A light from the sun, which is sunrise and sunset. Or you can also buy a red light panel, like for me, save 20% off with the code Rimka. Okay, plug. Um, I got to pay the bills. So, but celery juice makes your ass burn too. And, you know, most people out here drinking all the celery juice are white people. Y'all don't need help burning, okay? So, like, nobody talks about that. So maybe why you're, all the things. And so isn't it in interesting? You become more photosensitive and you put more cancer-causing sunscreen on. <laughs> Not, not a coincidence, I don't think, okay? Um, now, it is has a lot of water and it has a lot of minerals and it is a natural diuretic. That's why people like talk about it like, oh, it's low calorie and you chew a lot and you burn calories from masticating and it helps you pee a lot. Well, that's actually stressful on the kidneys to just pee for no reason, to just throw in diuretics. That makes your kidneys work harder. Then we get to um, the big one kidney stress. So now we've already stressed it out because we're making it do more work than it really needs to be doing because uh, my uterus didn't make a juicer and one didn't come out with my baby. So my baby probably or no, doesn't, doesn't need a juicer. And you are not going to find a Vitamix or a juicer out in the nature. So I'm pretty sure we were never meant to juice the celery in the first place. So if we were meant to ever eat it, We'd be eating a little bit of it because we were a shitty hunter or nobody liked us to share their meat. <laughs> okay, just saying, you're not a likable person <laughs> if you have to eat celery in the wild because you wouldn't come across it and be like, damn, look at a celery. Doesn't that look and taste amazing? No, you don't say that when you find celery out there. You don't, nobody does. Nobody's like, wow. You know what I'm talking about, okay? You certainly want to juice it. So there's that. 
So let's, what, what's the big, biggest, biggest thing everybody talks about with celery juice? Oxalates. What are oxalates? Oh man, it's this little crystal spike glass protection spiky thing that plants make um, that helps protect it. It helps give its plants structure and it helps them move things around, but it also helps, you know, stab you like, don't eat me, fool. They're not trying. Nobody wants to be eaten. I don't want to be eaten. My dog doesn't want to be eaten. The antelope, the broccoli, the Brussels sprouts, the kale and the celery are not like, oh, thank you for eating me. (laughs) They aren't. They're like, bitch, who are you? What are you doing? And I'm going to stab you and kill you with my spikes. Oxalates. All right. So those build up and they, that's what gives you kidney stones. That's what it can, they, kidney stones are literally uh, calcium oxalates. That's what they're called. The majority, that's they test them. That's what they are. So you get them from eating too much oxalates and not having enough magnesium. So the calcium is binding to it. So a lot of people can get away with eating a lot of oxalates because they take a lot of magnesium and eat a lot of magnesium and it helps that. So not everybody has an oxalate accumulation problem and they can get away with eating more of that poison because it doesn't accumulate. Other people have a a deposition accumulation issue with it, like for whatever reasons. I don't want to like, let's just say like that's where you are in life. Maybe it's just aging. Maybe it's because you were vegetarian a long time. Maybe it's because you had an illness and maybe it's your genetics, whatever. This person can clear them out better. This person is a little bit, so they have to build up. You have an accumulation of this biotoxin in your tissues. Well, these little glassy, spiky things can cause a lot of problems in a place they do it is the kidneys. So celery juice is a shit show for people with digestive issues. So I will say, please, if you're watching this and you have something like Crohn's, irritable bowel, um, diverticulitis, an inflamed bowel, I would put uh, MS in this category because they have it's a different situation with this with the lack of um, movement with the neurogenic like paralysis, but I'm going to put it there. Uh, celiac, gluten sensitivity, something like leaky gut, anything that you're having, please do not be doing celery juice. I wouldn't even eat it. And I would also avoid spinach and kale like the plague. And I would avoid sweet potatoes for the most part too. Very high oxalate damaging. They're ripping through like, like picture staples going through your gut. It's very bad. So whenever people with those conditions try this oh dear god it's so bad and i've seen them come to me post this and it's horrifying how much work we have to do and how much pain they're in and what their body's trying to do to excrete the stuff out um it's heartbreaking so it's like they already have an open wound like a you know it's like and all i'm doing is throwing glass and salt on it that's what celery juice is doing glass and salt on on a pus bleeding wound as it is right ulcerative colitis not a good thing all right so please that's if you don't listen to anything else please avoid it um let's see if there's anything those are the big ones so let's oxalates again it's a it's a plant toxin it's this thing that they do we bind them up in the gut calcium um Uh, is binding all over the place. So even too much, eating too much oxalates can also lead to osteopenia, osteoporosis, um, because the calcium will be leaching out. So it can weaken your bones, it can cause kidney stones. It does a bunch of stuff. These little um, oxalates come in and they're, I mean, that's kind of the best way, toothpick knives, glass. Well, they break your enzymes all over they go into the cells they break the membranes they damage they just start cutting up and ripping things up they particularly damage the mitochondria Um, you have a lot of those things going on in the brain and oxalates cause beyond kidney stones lots of joint pains lots of skin issues rashes psoriasis eczema and depression brain fog suicidal ideation um, and I get very it's thyroid issues. So if you have a thyroid issue, you could be exacerbating it by doing celery juice and things like that, or you could cause one. Um, so those are my big things about celery. You know, thyroid it damages the thyroid, damages the skin. Um, depression 
it's big and inflammation. So if you don't know, that's what I specialize in brain stuff related to depression, attention deficit. Um, often I have children, I t I've been testing oxalate um, in a urine test. I use Great Plains Labs, their organic acid test. I've been using that for about 15, 20 years or something like that. A very long time in practice, all right? They have been a leader in oxalate testing. So I knew what oxalates, let me see this. I didn't know what oxalates were about food. I knew what oxalates were related to candida infections. I didn't make the connection about food that much until pretty recently. I just looked at them as a byproduct of candida. So when you have yeast, candida infections in the gut. So I use that test um, always on everybody, especially children on the spectrum with autism, ADHD. It's a new oxalates coming from candida look like ADHD, anxiety, depression, brain fog. So children were being misdiagnosed often with ADHD or anxiety or whatever and having trouble in school. And it's because they had a massive yeast infection and the oxalates from that were causing the brain problem. So we clean up the thing. So I knew about it in terms of that, let me say. I, I just was very conditional with autism and candida. And I didn't know the bigger picture of how many things had oxalates in them. I just knew the big hitters like spinach and almonds. And I would eliminate about five to 10 top big foods for families and bind the oxalates and kill the candida and deal with that. Now, if you know with autism, their guts, they're very susceptible to yeast all the time. And you have to really stay on top of that and keep testing it. So that's my caveat. But I didn't really understand the level until I started studying um, Sally K. Norton. She's like really, I would say the oxalate queen and, and doing more of her stuff and looking at her list. I'm like, oh, this is, this is bigger and more widespread than I realized. I wasn't connecting it to the skin rashes. I wasn't connecting it to the joint pain. <laughs> I was only looking at the um, mental health issues and I was only relating it to candida infections and that was my mistake clinically and you know you learn and you grow and you get better so um and it's very big and like the keto carnivore community now so we're all talking about it and this and that so I think on that point I will leave it alone as to those are my big hitters as to why I don't like celery juice and for the woman who uh, asked me that I'll make sure I send this to you in the dm I forget your name and if you guys have any questions about that here, I'm going to go ahead and answer them, okay? Um, so again, I gave you the pro. I mean, I was like, well, they're getting structured water, and they're probably eliminating some other poisons. So, you know, junk food, again. I think celery juice is an upgrade to Twinkies, right? It's not an upgrade to steak and eggs, but, I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. And full-on medical medium Anthony is a is a is a shill okay there, there's my opinion there's my professional what do, you think, what do you think of him I think he's a moron and he's taking your money and I can't believe I can't believe people like him are out there doing this shit and people like me get kicked off Twitter and banned and shut down and dis I, I'm disinformation and that guy is still going okay and caveat I have no problem with medical intuitives. I believe you can channel information and no, I, I actually think he is legit in that he can pick up what's in someone's field. I, I've seen him like, ah, that guy's picking up shit in the field. He, he's knowing things, but he's also a little bit psychotic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that comes with it sometimes. Sorry. Narcissist. Woo. No, ma'am. I want no part of it. Okay. So let's see. Yeah. Medical medium, nut job. I, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. But I could throw him because I eat a lot of meat and he's like this. I'm going to tell you right now, you put me and him in a fight, I'm winning hands down. No, no doubt. I'm not even sure that's a beta male. I don't know what that is. I don't, it, it doesn't make me feel safe. He's not going to, he can't do anything to help me or my son or my dog. I'll handle it. And that's not what makes a woman feel real good. Like, what kind of, who? I mean, just saying, that's not, that's not the kind of men I want walking around, to be honest. I need some men to be able to pull me out of a car if I'm trapped somewhere. Come in and my house, throw me over their shoulder and carry me out. He couldn't do it with his celery juice. Sean Baker could. Mm -hmm. He could do it, no problem. <laughs> Pick up me, my son, and the dog and be like, what? Y'all got a ribeye? Mm-hmm. 
That's what I like. Okay, shout out to Sean. Um, all right, let me see if there's any questions that I will can, you know, right now and then, oh, I got patience at 12. I got to go to work, y'all. Okay, let me see. I'll make sure I save this. Let me just make sure. Thank you for popping on, you guys. I appreciate it. Good morning. Okay. Yeah, let me just see if there's something. I'm sorry. It takes me a minute. Oh, thanks for my window boxes. Oh, yeah, my, my, one of my good friends from Detroit, Peaches, made them for me. She was like, let me help you. Yeah, I had to call. I had all these guys messing up my house, and I was like, girl, I, I'm a, I need a lesbian from Detroit. Can you come fix my house? She was like, yes, I'll, I'll buy a ticket right now. <laughs> Don't you love people you've known forever that just that help you? I'm from the Midwest, and I'm just telling you, Detroit people, we are really loyal. And like this, this family, they blame it on the detox symptoms, meaning like some of the celery juice stuff, the pain. I don't know if you, like the, I don't know. I'm, I wish I understand that question. Sorry. Um, oh yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow sells candles. That's the center of her vagina. You guys don't know that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just, I, I mean, Holly weird, Holly weird. Um, Okay, I'll do another stuff on structured water. Structured water, I, I talk about that in my M1 course, uh, my master's course. I probably should talk about it a little bit more in there. Maybe I'll make some new videos to that course. I have an online learning center where you guys can, I can go over a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm actually going to raffle some off this week, either this week or next week. So you'll look for that. I'm going to raffle off some stuff. Uh, antibiotic and mineral chelator. It is a mineral chelator. I mean, it, so it's a heavy metal chelator, actually. Um, oxalates. But... You know, can celery just cause irritation to your eyes? Yes, the oxalates can be coming out in your eyes. Glyphosate, yeah, absolutely. Um, have you consumed? Oh, okay, just asking a question. Are all plants, vegetables carcinogenic? I don't think so. I no, it depends on what you're eating and what's in them and the state of your health. Um, thoughts can, are carcinogenic. I mean, any you know, I. So I just be, would be careful about blanket statements like that. Sorry, spinach is the worst oxalate. Spinach to me is probably the most toxic thing I see where I really, um, like six leaves of spinach hits this the poisonous oxalate level. It's really, really dangerous. So... Um, that's one of the first things that parents will be really proudly telling me, okay, I got him having a smoothie in the morning, it's kale and spinach and blueberries. And, and they're telling me this, like, so proud, you know, and they're coming to me for ADHD or autism help for their sons or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay. Can we, why are we not eating eggs? I'm like, what's, what's the problem? And I'm like, do you not like to cook? What's the deal, mom? But you, you got, got a crock pot? Can you make a steak? And I'm amazed how many of these mothers are not feeding their young men red meat. I'm like, oh no, mama, uh, this, you got to stop. You got to stop not thinking that, why are you not giving him a burger? So yeah, we have lots of conversations about that. And they kind of get surprised. Okay, I don't know, how can I share this? So Loax Grandma, it'll be on my feed, um, and then you can just share it, and I'll probably convert it, you know, to a YouTube later. Um, oh yeah, you eat a lot of it, but so like, oh please honey, love Jax, just, just, no. <laughs> so it's very hard to digest plant material, period, and you need to be really careful with what you do. Now. If you're having a lot of oxalates to love jacks, um, don't just like go zero oxalate. Like the dumping that will happen is, is too fast, hard. It can be really bad. You should follow low ox grandma and Sally K Norton. Um, 
if you just put in the search like oxalates on Instagram, you'll find some good accounts or maybe somebody, you know, when I post this, Low Ox Grandma, you could help tag, you know, and give some good accounts to follow. Um, you don't have to be zero oxalate by any means. And I think you really should titrate. You know, I'm, I'm not into really radical drastic changes in people's diets because I, I don't want them to go through keto flu and blah, 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 all that. There's no need to be suffering. There's, you're already suffering. Okay. Let's let, let's support your body's ability to do what it needs to do. So yeah, I love Jax. I, you, you, there's lots of free help out there. And if you need private care, there's lots of us. I'm available. Other people are available to help you. Tons of mental illness issues with oxalates. I was really surprised as when, um, and I will tell you, Great Plains Labs is one of the, he, the owner of that, his, he's got great, I don't remember his name, the scientist, but he has, he hates an oxalate <laughs> and he talks about it in really powerful um, lectures and webinars. And so that's, again, I just made the connection always of autism, ADHD, and candida. I wasn't full, I wasn't getting, you know, people don't come to me for kidney stones, you guys. I mean, that's just... They're coming to me for those other things. So that's where, where I'm hyper-focused there. Um, so I see a certain population. I don't see everything. Um, so I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't see that, really. People don't come to me for that. So I had to learn it as I've gone along. What veggies should you be eating? So very little, Love Jacks. I would stick with more um, meat and low glycemic fruits so anything with a seed is a fruit so a lot of things you call a fruit are i mean a vegetable are actually a fruit like cucumbers that's a fruit zucchini squash those are fruits avocado that's a fruit olives those are fruits um so as far as vegetables um asparagus i don't like a lot of them there's there's certain leafy greens like oh, i have a list of the low oxalate things like i don't eat any of them really but like arugula or something i have a whole list um that i keep for patients <laughs> if you want to message me i'll send you some of that or just go to sally k norton go to sally k norton her website take one of her courses take one of her i mean she's gonna know all of it the best but there's lots of basic lists so asparagus i mean some broccoli and brussels no, not brussels Bru some broccoli cauliflower if you really oh shit hang on sorry a tree just went down. Okay, I think it's okay. Not, not on a house. Wow. But I just saw it. Um, there's that. But, but I would be more um, on low deuterium fatty fruits. Avocados, olives, cucumbers, zucchini squash, things like that. Um, I, the, the, the vegetable part should be pretty minimal, to be honest. Um, and there's some low oxalate leafy greens available if you are super into salads or whatever. I don't really know why. Nobody really likes salad. They like the blue cheese on top of it. I mean, just tell the truth, right? Yeah, pain-free parents. She's got some stuff that's good. So love Jax. Please, there's lots of people here talking to you. Please take note. Follow them. Follow the accounts. Tons of free help out there, okay? Um, oxalates cause a lot of brain fog, joint pain. Yeah, pain in the eye, people. Um, daughter's mysterious IBS issues all went, went, all but went away after I cut out the almond milk and veggies. Poof, I better, yeah. It's a big thing. And I know it's a tough thing, right, for the community. Like, I gave my son almond milk. And he still drinks it. And I don't want him to, but it is what it is. Why? Many of us that have... So I was diagnosed uh, celiac, atypical celiac, 17 years ago when I was vegan. So I had to stop all the gluten, soy, and dairy. And my nephew is autistic. So again, gluten, soy, dairy gone. My sister Hashimoto's gluten, dairy, soy gone. So when you, when you are dealing with dairy, activating the same genetic code... Um, that brings up, you know, with, with gluten and glad, gliadin and soy, because it all hits the same thing. It all is the same, right? You have to eliminate that stuff out of your life. And so you are looking for substitutes, right? And it, it gets tough. We're like, okay, some people want to be able to still to have a little bit of something, and we use these substitutes, which have other problems. But like, again, people can, different people can do different things, clear oxalates in, in different ways. So, 
you know, I'm not going to get into the raw milk versus pasteurized, homogenized, but I'm just giving you an idea. Like it's, it's big in almonds uh, and, and certain things that people, it, the paleo superfoods are typically wicked high oxalate. So people who go paleo and do really well for two to three years, and then in that third or fourth year start collapsing and having problems and they just think they have to double down. Nope, at that point, they're getting benefits from eliminating a certain group of poisons and processed foods and getting good, some good nutrients and they're getting a lot of animal base and paleo. And now they're suffering two to three or four years later from oxalate and, and lectin and, and phytate poisoning at that point. And they don't know that. But the paleo superfood problem, it's, they're so high in poisons, it's insane. Um, hi, Debbie. Love you. What's my opinion on leptin resistance? It sucks. You don't want it. Is that what you want? I mean, I'm not sure. I don't think that's what you want, but I've been doing like leptin resets and read the Mastering Leptin book 20 years ago. I've been using that in clinical practice. A lot of people I see out there selling courses right now took my course and they're, <laughs> that I taught them and now they're selling their own courses. Uh, so leptin resistance is a big problem. That's why people are fat and sick. You don't want it. You don't want it. Get your ass in the sunlight. Okay? There's a lot to that. Read Mastering Leptin. I think it's probably your best bet on that. Um, all right. I think you... Oh, what time is it? Oh, Kardashians. God bless them. Okay, I'm good. I got to go, though, Sue. Let me see. Nothing from nature can be harmful. How are, like, any medicine? What do you mean nothing from nature can be harmful? Who, who, is, who just said that? <laughs> Have you not been out in nature? Do you not know like 90% of the plants can kill you? Like right away? What do you mean nothing from nature can be harmful? I, I don't even know what to say to that. Good luck with that. Nature is vicious. Period. You know, it, it can be used medicinally in small doses. We, we use poison to treat things all the time, but that's still a poison and the, the the doses and the, the, how does that cures and the quantity, what the hell is that phrase, you guys? Anthony, who, I don't know, he's the medical medium. He's Anthony somebody. I don't know his last name. You know. Yeah, this is a classic. When I went vegan, they all said all my symptoms were part of the detox. I lost teeth. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. Hair, and they kept telling me to push forward, never got better. Yeah, that's, I just... When I interviewed yesterday, Jay Campbell, we talked about that. It's a very common thing that people say, oh, the hair, oh, it's just part of detox. No, ne losing your hair is never like a part of detox. It's not, it's not how it is. Not, not, no bueno. Um, all right. What about poisonous plants? What about them? There's tons of them. I don't understand the questions. Or maybe that's just talking to somebody else. That's what I think it's best transition from vegan diet. Um, one that's a great question. I, you have to deal with fatty liver, get the liver working and you got to deal with stomach acid. So I would do it slow. I would probably start with like eggs and fish because the stomach acid doesn't need to be so low initially, but you're going to have, um, you're going to have problems. So we want to get those. I would be looking at, I would test stomach acid and look at the liver and get those going. Um, but it'd be, you know, first thing is just adding in animal things slowly and seeing how people respond. I had no problem vegan when I went. I mean, I just, I could eat a burger instantly. So there was no transition issue for me. And in three days I was like, praise Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, where's Buddha and Shiva and everybody else? Because I had no idea how miserable everything was. I, I, I was like, oh my God, it's like a miracle after 14 years vegetarian 12 years vegan so for pain-free parents just stomach acid liver pancreatic enzymes they work together and so because if you've been vegan that long your stomach acid will not be as low as it should be that two and a half to three you know four at the max it's not going to be there and the liver is going to be congested and it's not used to making enough bile because when the stomach acid is too high ph too high um it, it sends a signal to the liver, and so it doesn't make the bile the same, and it, that sends a signal to also the pancreas, and it doesn't make enough enzymes. So you don't have good digestion yet. So there's some things I'd be doing to support it. I'd probably be starting with like essential amino acids. I'd be trying to nourish them with something they can easily digest. 
you know, essential amino acids or raw amino acids, which you're going to absorb 99% of those. This is fermented, made from fermented bacteria, and they actually are vegan. So I'd be building, building first, just to give you an idea, until I got the liver and the stomach I know working well, so I don't have gastric distress. Um, okay, I'm going to, I got to go, because I got to get ready. Um, and... Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And, uh, oh, glyphosate. Well, yeah, glyphosate, mineral chelator. Well, uh, actually, it's a, it's a chelator, a heavy metal chelator, actually, too. Glyphosate's a hot mess, you guys. I mean, I don't even, that's a whole other. I've done some interviews. Go to my YouTube. I interviewed um, Stephanie Seneff about that recently. We talked about glyphosate and deuterium. Um, she's amazing. And there's a big glyphosate deuterium connection, which we're learning more about right now. But on that note, I'm going to go. Much love, much love. I'll repost. Uh, I'll save it. Uh, I hate that it doesn't keep the comments from alive, you guys. So if you enjoyed this and when I post it, if you could come back in and just say something to give the post a little bit of energy so new people can watch it, that would be awesome. I would really appreciate it. And I'm going to go um, to work. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.